We can say that the major finding of our study is that all sorts of animals appear to follow the same ecological rule for how common they are or how abundant they are in an ecosystem. And by all sorts of animals, I mean a wide range of animals from birds to fishes to even little insects. And also, all of the parasites, the parasitic animals that live in or on those other sorts of animals. And the one nice thing about the rule is that it's simple. You can predict how common an animal is just by knowing its body size and by knowing how high up the food chain it is. And the general thing that we found is you know, something that's been pretty well known, that bigger animals are less common than small animals. This is body size here. Bigger animals like elephants or big birds are here, and the crabs are here, and the aphids, and a lot of the parasites are over here. And we found that all of them follow the same rule. Body size is important because it's tightly connected to how many calories an animal burns in its life. And if an animal needs more calories, that means it needs more food. And therefore, there's less big animals than small ones because there's less calories to go around when you've got a bunch of big things running around. Uh, the food chain is important because the higher you go up a food chain, there's less food around. And it turns out, therefore, you're less abundant. And we found that if you go up the food chain, you follow the same decrease, you become less common as you get bigger, but you're dropped down and less common than animals that are the same size but lower in the food chain. The second major finding from our results relates to production. All individuals as they grow or produce more offspring are adding more biomass out into the environment. If you look at the relationship of biomass production and individual body size, here let's put uh, production here. If we plot a line we get a relationship that shows that small bodied individuals are putting less biomass out in the environment per unit time than large bodied individuals. And there's a very distinctive slope to that relationship. What's fascinating in relative to our results is that the slope of individual biomass production is exactly inverse to the slope between body size and abundance. So what that means is that if we're interested in the biomass production of a particular species in an ecosystem, we multiply individual production by abundance and that leads to species level production. That is the product of these two lines and they cancel out, meaning there's a, a, a slope of zero. Anyways, the implications of this is that the production of a particular species is not necessarily affected by how big the body size of that species is. For instance, an aphid and a deer, they're both herbivores at the same trophic level, and despite the fact that they have very, very different body sizes, they can have equivalent production rates in an ecosystem. Or a tapeworm of that deer and a mountain lion that eats that deer, they're at the same trophic level, they would have also potentially equivalent production rates, independent of the fact that they're very different in body size. The most unique aspect is that prior to our work, ecologists did not consider the abundance of parasites. Our data uh, presented information on the body size and abundance of parasites. And when we looked at this general relationship, the parasites fell below the relationship for free living animals. And what this meant is that they're less abundant for a given body size. Working with the uh, complete food web information that we had, we show that when you include the, the trophic level, the feeding uh, uh, level of the parasites, that actually that brings them in line so that they now fall on the line uh, with the other, uh, with all the other animals, uh, presenting a general rule for all species, free-living and parasitic. Uh, 